Hey, everybody! The gang's all here! And this is Marshall Connolly, uh, Project Director for Connect Educator Month, joined by my good friends and colleagues, uh, Melissa Raspberry, Cheryl Nisbaum Beach, and Tom DeBoer, and we are um, thrilled to be kicking off Connect Educator Month 2015. Um, it's been a long year since last year. Uh, lots of lots has happened. Lots has happened. Lots has changed, and um, you know we're getting ready to kick off and uh, make this the biggest, best uh, connected educator month ever. And so, um, you know, we're about education. And I was thinking about that today, and uh, thinking back, and you know. In terms of school, we're like seniors this year. This is our fourth Connected Educator Month. We're getting ready to, um, you know, I don't know, graduate and move on to um, Connected Educator Month University, I suppose, if this is high school. And so, um, you know, I was in that kind of senior moment, that mode where I'm like thinking back on, on years past today, and I was really remembering um, a lot about you know, the road here and what we've done. And one of the things that really stands out to me every year is the trip to ISTE, which is kind of like the unofficial kickoff of um, Connected Educator Month because it's where we see everybody, we talk to everybody, we start getting everybody excited. And so um, today I brought with some stuff. Um, so, you know, if you don't know, like before when before Connected Educator Month was what it is today, it was part of a U.S. Department of Education contract. And I was the deputy project director on that. And one of my jobs at ISD was always to haul all the stuff. And so my basement is full of things from, like, past Connected Educators Month. Like, um, for instance, you know, uh, if I reach down, I've got this this fancy flyer from 2014 that I found, you know, laying on my dryer this morning because it's literally the stuff's everywhere. Um, if you remember in 2013, um, our friend Darren Cambridge and I set up a, a slick video production um, outfit in the, in his suite at the Marriott in San Antonio and recorded some, uh, some video interviews. So I, had, I brought along the big lighting rig we used to record those videos, you know, just a, a really, really expensive um, piece of AV equipment that's now sitting in a box in my basement. And um, this little foam microphone, um, for lapel microphone um, cover, which may have been, you know, really close to um, touching some luminaries in the field of connected education as they talked into our mic and recorded our camera, like Cheryl, like Tom Whippy, um, Lisa Schmucky of Edweb, those people all used this microphone. This is a really good thing. Um, and behind me, of course, this massive, um, here, I'll see if I can get more of it in the shot, massive poster, our very, our original logo, the big poster we used, um, I hauled this all over various SD conference halls. I hold it on airplanes and back and carry on and checked it. So, and it's in my basement too. So, um, so I brought all, that with. You have all um, the memorabilia. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's all just sitting here at my house in, uh, in Illinois. And so, um, I have a couple of other pieces of memorabilia that I'll get to later because I want to do something unique and special, but I want to, you know, I've talked long enough. Others, what, what are your memories of uh, four years? So I'm going to jump in here, guys. I'm Melissa Raspberry, and I'm so excited to be part of this. Um, and the reason is because I feel like, to, to play off Marshall's analogy, if we're in high school, I feel like I've gone from being, like, um, the kid who loved to watch all the school plays to now I'm actually in the drama club, and I get to be work behind the scenes because um, in years past, this is my first year being on this planning team for Connected Educator Month, in years past, um, in my uh, in my past jobs with Center Teaching Quality, before I came to the American Institutes for Research, we were just a participating organization. So I helped to organize activities. So it's been very, very cool to kind of get on the inside and see all the tremendous work. I always knew there were wonderful things happening, but not to the extent. I got to give you the three of you guys credit and so many other folks that have helped to make this happen from year to year. So thanks for inviting me and let me see the little kids' table because this, this has really been awesome. So tell me about that uh, beautiful pink boa you have on. Is that in celebration? Well, what better way? I mean, I, I can't say that this was from past Connected Educator Month, but what better way to show some excitement than wearing a feather boa? I, I left my tiara. I was going to try to buy for Connected Educator Month 2015, but, you know, we'll have to leave that up to someone else. I, I want to see Marshall wear the tiara. Okay, we'll, we'll make sure he has one. I'm going to have one somewhere here. Um, 
I could go find it. <laughs> you could. All right, Tom? Well, I mean, I think, you know, I have, I'm kind of flooded with memories of, uh, of CEM. I mean, I think that uh, 2012 was, I think, really magical uh, for all of us. But, I mean, Melissa, you were right with us from the very beginning, and everybody else here was. And, you know what they say, you never forget your first time, right? And um, I have a lot of great memories from that year. Uh, my friend probably being a session that was called Student Speak, where the students who were our panel virtually jumped from the virtual stage into a virtual mosh pit of educators and parents, listened to them and served it, and uh, with incredible dialogue among educators and students and parents alike. Um, to me, that session was sort of essential to what CM has been about. And I think that uh, my second really big memory from CM, I have so many, so I'm just going to talk about the highlights. It's um, Arnie Duncan's first Twitter chat in 2013. And it was his first Twitter chat anywhere, which was part of CM. I felt like it was really a, a pivot point in celebration for us and for, for me personally. Um, not only did it result in a Twitter feed that, um, frankly, not even a cheat or a peregrine falcon could follow, um, but it literally impacted the Department of Education initiatives, as uh, Richard Collada recounted in ISTE this, this summer. Um, and I think another sort of event that happened last year that was sort of indicative of where we've been and where we've come to was uh, something called uh, CEOCT, which was... Uh, Hashtag CEOct, which was last year's, for me, incredible uh, Twitter video marathon. Uh, it felt like the whole Connected Educator community had really picked up celebration, picked up the ball, and taken it to another level on that day. And uh, I understand that this year's uh, CEOct is slated to last 24 hours, wow. uh, passing from time zone to time zone around the world. And I, I can't wait to see what happens. Great. That's amazing. Well, I've got memories, too. You know, I remember back to when um, Connected Educator Month, like most of you, was just a twinkle in somebody's eye. And uh, we were all sitting around a table discussing, well, what would that look like if we did that? And there were a lot of people that were at that technical working group table that didn't think that if we had it, anybody would come. And uh, so I've always, I've always gotten a chuckle out of that because, whoa, did everybody come. And I guess for me, it's been when Steve Hargadon had connected cafe and then it went on and we worked it into Twitter chats from webinars and just all the great thought leaders and everybody that came around that space. And uh, so that's my memory. That's what I was thinking. So maybe on the organizing crew or the, the drama club, to use my analogy from earlier, I have to say that, you know, um, one of the things that I've often tried to help people understand with, you know, serving as a participant was how do you get the most out of the month, especially when there is just so much to see and do, how do you keep up with it all? Okay, because I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed, so I know that everyone out there has to be feeling that way too to a certain degree, so what, it, what advice do you guys have on how to get the most out of the month? I'll go first. No, I'll go first. Go ahead. You waited too long. <laughs> go ahead, Cheryl. So um, I think the most important thing is to pace yourself, that if you, join, if you join the calendar ahead of time and you start to look around and you run schedules and then you print out your schedule and you align it with your calendar, then it'll show you when different things are coming up. And so, um, and not to try to do everything at once, you know, like I, some people just pick the newbie uh, starter, starter kit and then they'll go through and do one of those activities each day, or maybe they've decided they're going to do seven or they're going to do four, one a week. And you do the, the activities and then maybe attend one thing a week. And then other people, of course, do several things each day. It just depends on your level of tolerance for ambiguity. Tom? Well, I would say I, I totally agree with you about pacing yourself because I, I think that's really important for this event. Um, I guess the other things I would add to that is our um, participate. And by that I mean, you know, a lot of educators are – in situations where you're doing professional development and it's basically seat time and what's called sit and get, that's not what and who we are about. Um, and I think that I would say, really recommend that if you're going to an event or an activity, um, 
the hallmark of those has been of CM events, which many educators have told us over the years, is that we're so much more inter interactive and so much more participatory than a lot of the professional development that, that, that happens in their own school districts. Um, and so, you know, we would met most of the events and activities, the webinars that will have uh, back channels uh, that are sort of the theory off stage, but end up hitting the stage pretty regularly. So I think, and pretty quickly, so I would say one thing to do is to really uh, insert yourself into the dialogue, uh, ask questions, make comments, et cetera, really make help, uh, make CM what it's always been, which is a very interactive participatory event because without your voice, without what you have to say, um, CM doesn't become uh, what it's become today. And that goes all the way up the chain. I mean, I think that going harkening back to uh, Arnie Duncan's first Twitter chat, there literally were comments from educators to Arnie Duncan that created initiatives that are in place in the Department of Education today. And I think that's also true for a lot of the organizations and a lot of companies who come and present we need to hear from you. So participation is really important. Don't be shy. You can start in the backstage, uh, in the off, in the sort of the, uh, the back channels. Um, and, uh, you know, as you make points that are important, you know, they'll be brought to the fore and you'll really be helping to make this a much better event. I think the other thing related to that, I would say, is uh, put events and activities on the calendar. Um, we can never have too many. And... Um, you know, we spent a fair amount of time this year and in past years encouraging the next generation of education startups to get involved because we always want CM to be on the cutting edge creativity, excuse me, creatively. Um, and that next generation includes you, the connected educator community, uh, the teacherpreneurs, um, you know, which uh, Melissa has been involved with many times, well, extensively with as part of CTQ over the years. If you're doing something creative, something innovative, or just even thinking about it, you know, we want to support you, and uh, not just in October, but beyond. So, Tom, tell me about the shirt. Oh, the shirt. Uh, this shirt is, um, well, it's called a boo-boo, and it's... Uh, is that because know, of, is that the, because of the chest hair? Or but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's a West African shirt. I got my start in education as a uh, uh, math science high school teacher in West Africa. Oh, cool. And I'm wearing this shirt. Uh, first of all, I have to say, this, this shirt fit me a lot better back then than it, than it does now. Um, I only weighed about 135 pounds at one point there, and the mommies in the village, um, that's the grandmas, were always trying to fatten me up with uh, starch and so forth. And so, uh, you know, we're very international now, so I'll say if there are any mommies in the ass, so who happen to get this uh, video, it worked. I'm finally <laughs> fat. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but I wore it because, uh, first of all, in celebration of the years I've been involved with education, I, you know, before I went and taught in West Africa, I had many different, very different plans for my, my future, and I really got hooked in education there. And I feel like with CEM that Every year that I've been involved in it, I'm getting more and more back to my roots um, because the event continues to get more and more distributed, but also because um, I feel like CM is doing something really important beyond just spreading knowledge, which is in Africa, in West Africa, in Cameroon, um, teachers are very highly respected the, um, and very highly supported. The word for teacher in most West African languages, and I understand this is true of East African languages too, is the same as the word for leader. Oh, and I feel like the same word as, as, as exists for leader, teacher and leader are the same words in most uh, West African and East African languages, because there is that level of respect and support for educators. And I feel like CM is playing a really important role in getting us to that point worldwide. Um, and so I'm, 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 I'm wearing this shirt in celebration of the years I've spent in education and in celebration of CM particularly, which I feel is bringing us back to our roots, even as we advance and innovate going forward. That's amazing. And I love hearing your stories because stories are a part of what Connected Educator Month is all about. So Marshall, 
if you were going to tell us what we should go do, I'm sitting here, I'm watching this video, I'm getting excited because I've got the month ahead of me. What's the first thing I need to go do if I want to be part of this month? What would your call to action be? My call to action, that's interesting. So uh, first I would go to our website and look at the calendar. I mean, uh, I mean that's that's pretty central um, to everything. It's where the events are. It's um, the hub. It's, you know, it's no mistake that it's front and center on our front page of our, our website. Um, you know, we know, we push out a lot of content via our blog and via Twitter, every CM, and, and a good bulk of that is is putting people in touch with events. And so, um, you know, that, that's, that's the, a great place to start. It's a great thing to do. Um, and, 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 and really it's, it's, it's central to what we're all about. Um, I would add with that though, to kind of piggyback on what y'all were talking about in terms of, um, getting the most out of it, right. Um, reach out to people. I mean, you, you know, we have a little help tab on our page where you're going to, you know, you can, if you need help with an event or something, you can get in contact with most likely me <laughs> and an email from me. If you need help getting an event on, on the calendar or need help finding something, you know, follow us on Twitter too and reach out to the big community on Twitter that follows C15 um, for help as well. Um, because, you know, because there are people that are out there waiting for that and wanting to connect. And, and so, yeah, that's, that's, that's a great place to start. How about you, Melissa? What should we do? Marshall kind of took some of mine because I was going to give the plug for Twitter as well. Um, I think that make sure that you're um, connected or following us on Twitter, um, following the hashtag C15. Um, there's lots of organizations that are tagging their information with that as well. Um, many are even sharing resources that may or may not be on the calendar, so there could be even more additional things that you can find there. Um, and I would just say, and this is kind of, again, um, piggybacking what others have said as well, is just don't get overwhelmed. Don't don't feel so overwhelmed you do nothing. So yeah. at least get started and take a look at a few things. And, um, you know, there's just so much to learn and see. And, and many of those things are archived, too. So if you miss it, it's, you can always come back later and see what's there. Yeah. What, what about you, Cheryl? What, what what action do you want people to take? Right well, you know, I want you to look at the variety of what's there. So you have um, Ed Connector, which is a great community. It's a matchmaking community that will match you and your interest in what you know how to do and are willing to share with people who want to learn it. And it will match your what you want to learn with people who know how to do it. So that's a great place to go. Uh, there's a, a connected educator community that you can go to that has book clubs and people are having sidebar conversations and there's coaches there to kind of take you through and teach you on demand kind of stuff. And so that's a cool place. And if you're a presenter, you can go into either one of those communities and start some discussion, too. I think also that there's going to be a whole lot happening because of Connected Cafe and the normal kinds of things that happen in the CE15 tag. So people should go and use that CE15 tag as well as follow at Ed Connector, which is our um, Twitter handle. You know, so I think um, going out and looking at Ed Connector Radio. There's on the website, there's radio shows, each of the themes. If you haven't gone to participate themes, that's kind of like the backbone, the spine that runs Connected Educator Month. And we have some amazing theme leaders. I think there's like, what is there, nine or ten of them, Tom? Yeah, I, I, I think it's at least nine. And they're they're all, you know, top, top level, top drawer organizations. And I think it's the best. You know, we had great theme leaders last year, but this year even it exceeds that in terms of uh, the organizations we have involved in that and what they're doing. Um, you know, and we'd encourage you to, you know, if any of those themes interest you, um, you know, get in touch with us or get directly in touch with the organizations because they're all very collaborative. You know, CEM is basically, I mean, in addition to getting educators more connected from the very beginning, it's been about uh, collaboration about getting organizations working together because we can't really have a fully functional connected education community without the free flow of information and that involves collaboration and we've seen more of that every year from 25 percent of the organizations 25 percent of the events excuse me um being collaborative in the first year to between 60 and 70 percent now and all the organizations involved in the theme leadership would love to hear from you about what you'd like to do to help advance that theme. And I'd also say, related to that, is 
you know, one of the big transitions for us for this year is that we are looking at this as more than a month. Um, we're looking at this as, you know, because we can't get everything done that we want to in a month. Um, so, you know, if you ask me what excites me about most about this year's event, it's that it's not going to be a month for us, just a month for us anymore. It's, it's going to be a great opportunity for sure. It's 31 days, which is longer than any other education event I know of. Uh, for us to come together as a community to celebrate and build on everything good that's happened the year before. But more importantly to me, at least, it's going to be an opportunity for us to brainstorm and discuss what needs to happen in education next, even with only a glimmer in our collective eyes right now, and continue to work together on those ideas and goals. Sorry, I was, I was celebrating a little bit. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'd like to jump on a couple of things you just said, Tom. Um, one being, and Cheryl's you, the themes. Um, you know, one, one thing I'm really excited about that I think is great for people this year is that we were, um, comparative to, to the first year years, first three years, we were pretty hands off in determining what the themes were. We kind of said, hey, you want to do this? Come tell us what you want to do. What are you interested in? What's your topic? And so I think that they're a lot more diverse this year. Um, you know, and, and anything, you know, from, um, I don't want to say typical, but, you know, a lot of what we've done in the past has been focused on online and PD and things like that. But we've got stuff this year on creativity, on social emotional learning, um, you know, all, a, a nice range of topics. So we definitely want to one up the idea of getting involved with the themes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, we, you know, pushing the idea of community owned goes all the way up to that backbone, all the way to those themes. And so, um, Continue that spirit as you get involved. Tell us what you want, and we'll, you know, try and deliver it via, you know, hooking you up with organizations or hooking you up with other educators and resources, things like that. So let's transition to maybe our farewell. I know we're all going to party a little bit and get excited because tomorrow we're kicking off. But um, what are your farewell words? Let's do that. Who'd like to go first? I'll jump in. I would say that. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that even though we are kicking off and starting the month of October, you really do have time to still come up with something. So if you're a participating organization or even an individual that wants to plan something, it's okay. Everything doesn't have to be on the calendar as of October 1. So feel free to add additional things, um, get your creative juices flowing, and if you want to add it toward the middle of the month, that's okay too. So don't feel like it's too late for you. Tom? Uh, I just want to build for a second on what Melissa just said, which is that traditionally every year, more than half of the events that end up on our calendar end up being added after the first. Mm -hmm. And as, as we've said before, you know, it's it's uh, we're looking to extend this beyond uh, just October. So if you've got events going on in November, December, et cetera, you know, please put them on as well. It, all I would say is that the sooner you put them up, the more people will know about them and the more advanced promotion you can get from us and from other collaborators and the more collaborations that are possible. So uh, I would encourage you to do that. But basically for me, if you sort of want to say one summary sentence, I, you know, I'm excited about the possibility that CM doesn't only mean Connected Educator Month, but it also means the Connected Education Movement that we're all part of. Good. That's great. So I'll go and then we'll let you have last word, Marshall. Um, I want to say absolutely thank you to the people that are sponsoring us this year. We've got we're working with a lot of great sponsors and participating organizations. And then we've also added memberships. So the one uh, smart thing I want to say to close out here is that if your organization wants to be involved in Connected Educator Month and you want to be involved in all the cool things we're doing, become a member. That's a great way that you can help to support the work that we're doing. And um, we're very grateful for that because uh, Connected Educator Month is cool. If you haven't done it, so it's hard It's hard for you to be able to uh, know what we're talking about and get as excited as we are unless you've um, drank the Kool-Aid. So I would say drink on, brothers and sisters. <laughs> How about you, Marshall? So, okay, so I'll close with two things. One um, light and one, you know, 
um, if, if it's possible for me to be serious about anything with that, which that's up for debate, um, one fairly serious one. So, so to circle back to what I started with, with this idea that this is our senior year, um, got a couple of things I want to, I want to, I want to push out there, try these out. We've always supported kind of contests and games and things like that. And so we wanted to, I want to launch a really simple one that, right now. So for an, an individual, all right, if you're an individual educator participating this month, if you can show us that you were the educator who participated in the most stuff throughout the month, I will personally find a way to get you this awesome, amazing CEM 2013 t-shirt that I've autographed. Oh! It says, it says, have a great summer, Marshall Conley. So this is an autographed t-shirt from 2013 by me if you can be the educator who participated in the most events. I'm trying now, for that. Currently, we, I'm trying for that. I want that. Okay, shirt. yeah, okay. Yeah, we don't want to leave out the orgs. So if you're a representative from an organization that puts the most events on the calendar, I've got a second. I've got this 2012 t-shirt here um, that I'm also autographed. This one says um, BFFs forever, Marshall Conley. And so, um, you know, you can, you can, this shirt could be yours for putting the most events on the calendar during the month. I mean, they're clean. My wife's washed them. I've only worn them a handful of times. But the autograph, you know, that's priceless. So, um, so you know, think about that. Get involved. Um, and, 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 you know, can have one of these shirts. Um, second thing I want to close on is, um, I, you know, Cheryl, you thank, you know, we've all kind of thanked the participants and the sponsors, and that's great. And I want to thank all of you. Um, our respective organizations, um, Melissa and I, working with American Institutes for Research, Tom and his partners at Colonel and Associates, and Cheryl and her organization, Powerful Learning Practice. Um, you know, Connect the Educator Month represents a lot of um, effort and energy and and work, and we do it because we care about it. We care about delivering a great experience to all of you, and so um, you know. I just, you know, just want to say thanks to the, my my colleagues on the on the call here to 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 note that because um, you know it's 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 a heck of a ride um, and it's been going on for a bunch of years now and so it's it's really exciting to do it again. So this is thanks, fun, man. you guys. I'll see everybody at Connected Educator Month tomorrow, right? Absolutely. All right.